feature, they call it Intiwana's prism, where the little mountain is fractal to the big mountain behind it. This is a uh, Amarna Amenti. The, the term Stargate or Uru Asa LM Jerusalem, the place where the Uru Asa Queen made the L or face shift. Um, here's that altar at Machu Picchu. Here's what the bed looks like. This is uh, electrical engineering for birth or death, actually. This is Intiwana's prism here. See the stone here is fractal to the shape of the mountain behind it. It's called Intiwana's prism. But if you know what that means electrically, it means the small paramagnetic device leaves an electrical shadow of the big electrical capacitor behind it. That means fractal compression or charge acceleration. So these structures were places for successful birth and death because they were places from which plasma could be distributed. There's the rainbow. <laughs> and there's this story about June 21 and the sun lining up, your plasma can go, not the, not, you get the flavor. So I guess we can't say about your brother more than that, but some suggestions there. Yes, more, more thoughts. John? Yeah. When the plasma leaves your body, it just seems to be a nebulous mass. And then does it morph, morph into a torus form? What happens there? And the other thing is when I could see, had an out-of-body experience where I could see my own energy form as a sort of um, like a cocoon, cigar-like. That wasn't a uh, torus form. So is it? change through uh, different, um, you know, a bit of shape shifting through this. Um, if, if we look at the orb, yeah, that's the right question. If we look at the orb phenomena, you see a torus, and then you see dodeca ecosa as they become more morphic. So at first, biologic plasma will seem amorphic, as in the picture from Karakoff after death. But then as biologic plasma becomes more and more compressed, if you zoom in, you begin to see geometric structures, dodeca ecosa. I remember in the Adelaide Fountain Group where they were sending love to the fountain of Adelaide after a while. At first, the plasma sphere above the fountain seemed amorphous, but later they were seeing specific platonic geometries there. And, and here is the amorphous plasma here, but later when this plasma gets its show together, <laughs> it, becomes, it begins to compress. And, and you can see that also in tornado formation that if you look at the way tornadoes become self-aware the same way people do their core becomes implosive so first seems amorphous but now you see a pentagram now if we zoom in pent that's a pentacle Katrina so that was, a, that was the plasma becoming phase conjugate, uh, urge to become self-aware. And that, that means that you can now begin to talk to that tornado. That tornado is ready to be spoken to because it's become phase conjugate and therefore the charge distribution at the center. So that's, a, that's something that, a, that would be more readily available for a shaman to inhabit, actually, and steer because it was closer to being conjugate and therefore impulsive and therefore projected. In other words, saying, ready to communicate to DNA radio. Well, the pharaohs, when they shoot up through that shaft of the pyramid, mm -hmm. they seem, seems like a gun where they're firing straight up from the Orion belt, so they don't seem to be uh, hanging around or wondering where they're going to go. So why would you want to go up to Orion or something? Because if you're reading about the Anunnaki, their civilization, Seems stupid, like I said, it's uh, worse than the George Bush one. <laughs> well, we're supposed to do a we're supposed supposed to do a short review of the Anunnaki Uru history, but Valerie made me promise that it was going to sound like a happily ever after. So, um, but, but but just just if we just look briefly, in addition to that tube you're pointing out from the pyramid. The geometry of the stone over the king's chamber called Jed is golden ratio, as in Jedi, because that is the geometry that creates a vertical component 
like a shim. And that not only did it reduce the weight on the stones over the king's chamber, but the plasma of the initiate in the king's chamber could be experience that acceleration of plasma. So there's a lot of functions. As far as why, why is there a star map of Orion at Giza and why would, why would they want to go here, go there? Actually, um, you know, the solar system is a kindergarten and, uh, you know, it would be retrograde not to graduate. So it's not escapist to want to go through the sun. It's rather like, you know, graduate from kindergarten sooner or later, please. And uh, Orion is the next biggest star map or fractal and that's where the Orion Wars. The very word Orion, by the way, means Orion, A-U, as in origins and Ur, because the A-U term means uh, uh, gold or phase conjugate or fractal. So if you look at the symbol, the, the structure, this is maybe leaping. We are going to doing this story at the end of our science of DNA today, but that's the Orion uh, arm of the galaxy is fractionated, it's broken. And that's what the Orion Wars did. Uh, they made a mess of the fractal. And this, this is Orion in 3D. You see the double cone? That's the two-phase conjugating cones. Old Japanese woodcut of the shape of the star systems of Orion. This is Mintaka, Al-Malam, al, -Malam, al there, Beta Geis, Beta Juice, Beltrix. And that was actually two opposing cones and the symbol for Orion, universal symbol for Orion, this should look familiar. What did we talk about all morning? That's a picture of what we discussed all morning. Two opposing cones conjugating. Why would that then be the symbol for Orion? Anybody know? The name for this is two opposing cones. One's called Yah, Yod, Yah, and the other's called Vah, Yod, He, Vah, He, Yahweh. It's plasma <laughs> physics, right? Two opposing cones. And so that, that's, it. that's the reason, a symbol for Orion because, I don't know if you can see it here, a little bit light in here, but there's a double cone there. What's happening in the plasma here? Centripetal force. What is the area in our galaxy which is most pregnant with star births in astrophysics? What is, what, why do stars go to so much trouble to make DNA? Because <laughs> where stars are getting born, <laughs> You need gene pools to squirt in the centripetal force. Uh, an introduction to angel physics, where if you really know the physics, interstellar plasma clouds are what you call angels. We're going to look at the Ophanum and Opium later. And putting your plasma into these interstellar plasma bursts is how you grow up and <laughs> become what holds galaxies together. Hello, grow up. Start, you know, the, the sun didn't go to so much work to cook up DNA here for no adiabatic reason. And that's where we're going later in this course. So about why to go to Orion, yes, there was a mess there, but also <laughs> there's a creative process going on. Yes, sir? Just from my understanding, like, I mean, I mean, you had it on one of your websites on there, you know, the animal, 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 the